welcome everyone for this presentation. And um, yes, uh, this is Southeast Asia, as you know, and um, which is an archipelago divided by seven countries, uh, the Philippines, Malaysia, part in Peninsula, part in Borneo, Indonesia, uh, the Sultanate of Brunei Darussalam, Timor East, and Papua New Guinea. So it's a, it's a large uh, uh, um, area, which is thousands of islands and obviously uh, uh, thousands of species of animal and plants. And um, as you know, Southeast Asia is basically is the ecotone between the, the temperate, the continental flora and fauna and uh, Australasia flora and fauna. And, uh, and then you have this transition zones, which was first described and discovered by Alfred Russell Wallace, uh, and which he drew several lines, but you know, the famous one, the most important is this one. And there are others, lines according to the taxa that you are considering. And I have to say, when I did my PhD fieldwork in Sulawesi, and then I went to Kalimantan in Borneo, to do, to do other part of the field work, uh, I did realize that you know, the difference between this part of the world and this part of the world is quite obvious. I don't want to say that, you know, but this man indeed is a genius, but it was, it's something that you can really see it. You know, in Brunei, in, Brunei, in Sulawesi, we had the, uh, the, the small tarsius uh, monkeys, one big monkeys, then you jump into Borneo and then you have orangutans, proboscis monkeys, uh, uh, langurs, uh, um, um, and other not big fauna, but mesofauna, plus the, the, the forest, which is different. But for, for plants, this sort of division, it doesn't work very well. But anyway, what is important here is that if we go a, a step a bit behind for 11, 20, 21,000 uh, years, we can see that actually it was possible to walk from Hong Kong, Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur, Singapore, Indonesia, to my house in, in Brunei, just on, on, on ground soil. So this brings two points. First one, an uh, important research frame of biogeography, but also the importance of conservation, which means that what we see today in terms of plant species distribution in this area is not, I don't want to use the optimum, but you know, these many plants that are distributed here today, they are already in the small distribution that they used to have 21,000 years ago, and yet, we are fragmenting the forest. We are reducing even more the forest, the forest cover. So it brings a lot of problems and questions in terms of conservation. Right. At the same time, in this, from the Gulf of Thailand all the way here, there was a large basin smaller than what we have today in the Amazonian basin, but basically there was a very large flat area, sometimes wet, sometimes dry uh, forest, which allows animals to move around as well as plants. That's why today we have orangutans in Sumatra and orangutans in Borneo, or other species that have a dis disjunction distribution, which you don't see this picture, you cannot understand very well the distribution of those species. Fine. The forest today obviously is different. It's we are there. We have to deal with that. We and, uh, and so there is a lot of conversion at the moment in in this part of the world, which is also the part of the world which is growing faster in terms of population. So more resources are collected from the natural resources, forests, uh, rocks, and minerals, and so on and so forth. And then I'll, I'll bring here two examples from. Uh, Sichuan Bana project and, uh, and my Borneo project. So, Sichuan Bana is a prefecture in the uh, province of Yunnan, south of Yunnan. We are bordering Laos, Myanmar here, Vietnam is a bit here. 
And this is the view of the botanic garden where I spent three years. Beautiful botanic garden. I, I really ad, uh, advise you to visit if you, if you go to Asia. It's basically roughly 10 times smaller than Missouri. So it's quite a big area. And this is the view. So if you go up here in this hill, it's actually is a limestone structure. And this is the landscape. So you have a limestone outcrop and a piece of forest, plantations of banana in this case. Then you go on top of it, you see this beautiful landscape, extremely difficult to work on it because you can easily fall. And, the, and these rocks are extremely sharp, full of orchids, strange ferns, lots of fagaceae. And, uh, and the view from there is just a sea of rubber plantation. This is not a forest. I mean, this is a kind of forest. Depends on how you define forest. But uh, this is a, a monoculture of rubber, OK? Until you can see, which is partly true or not, because the landscape is, is mixed, obviously. It's a matrix. So you have the, a piece of national park here, the plantation, uh, rubber, banana, um, pineapple, and uh, small pieces of forest here and there. So in terms of conservation is a problem. You know, how, how do we preserve the high diversity of plants that we have here in a situation where it's extremely um, impacted? The projection of expansion of rubber plantation is, is positive. You know, that the, it's expected to get to grow more and more, particularly in Laos and eventually even in Cambodia. And uh, so in my project, I uh, um, categorized the, the fragments based on their dimension. So small fragment, medium fragment, a large fragment. As you can see here, there is a big chunk of forest in the northeast of uh, Shishambana. And uh, and it's also the place where there were these elephants running around a, couple, a, a year ago, actually. They were moving from Myanmar to Vietnam, from north of Yunnan, south of Yunnan, to, down to Laos. So they were passing always through this national park, the, uh, the Asian Elephants National Park. And I have to say that uh, elephants by the Chinese government now has been at the same level of panda, panda bear. So, they have panda, tiger, and elephant. So they are very. There are several projects in cons in preserving the uh, the elephant's population. So there's a lot of conservation project running in uh, in in Shishambana, but also in the entire south of Yunnan. Good. Fine. But what kind of forest uh, do we have in, Bana, in Shishambana? Is it, is it uh, deciduous forest, uh, as, um, uh, uh, subtropical forest? There are several more technical definitions that I can use here, but I want to use a very old definition by uh, Timothy Mut Whitmore, who has been in, in Southeast Asia for many, many years. And he defined the forest of Bana, birds in the tropical rainforest there, there means Shishambana, sang same songs as the birds in the tropical rainforest of Malaysia, confirming it's true every green rainforest plant. Actually, it's true. I mean, if you consider the overlapping in terms of uh, families and genres, they are uh, uh, um, evergreen tropical Southeast Asia. Basically, it's the, it's the edge of the, South, the Malaysian tropical forest with all the species that they have a core distribution in Malaysia, Borneo. They have the limit, the north limit, in this part of uh, Yunnan, north of Vietnam, Hainan, and so on. OK, so we are talking about tropical forest. Fine. So that's, again, the, the different landscapes, the different fragments. And my question was to assess, I assessed uh, uh, 45 fragments with different, uh, different plots and so on and so forth. What I found is uh, that we have under 30 species. Most of them are rare. Rare here is not IUCN category. It is a category based on the frequency of my plots. And uh, uh, most of the rare and common species are on the lowland. But what is, what is important is that only 20 species out of 130 
they have a, a cover index over 50%. Basically, the biomass of, of terrestrial herbs is driven by a few species, which is something not new. We know it, and, but it's always important to, you know, to, to, to document it. Fine. But what are those factors that are driving the distribution of the species within a fragmented landscape? You know, fragment size, the topography, the forest structure, the soil property with all these parameters. And the second, third question is, in small fragments, do we have a subset of community composition as the large fragment? Before they were the same forest and now it's divided. Well, considering the fern abundance, basically the cover index, what explain the abundance is basically soil properties, the aspect, and the steeper slope. Interestingly, basically the 20 most common, most abundant species are often on the warmer side of a hill, which is a bit different from what we expect as a fern to be in a wet and humid environment. For fern abundance. For, for fern species regions, again, is soil in its different perspective and, and the steep, the slope, basically. As you can see here, there's not yet the forest fragment. Basically, the fragment does not influence the species richness and abundance. And the composition, it's I have a question mark by myself on this on these results. Basically, is the tree basal area basically a DBH of large tree combined together, and uh, and which is a proxy of the forest uh, forest structure. And uh, I was expecting here uh, light availability, which is also an indication of the forest structure, but it did turn out not to be a, a significant factor. What is important here that the three common. Uh, uh, um, Dependent variable that we always use, you know, abundance, richness, and composition are not explained unanimously by the same factor, which is important to keep in mind. And the last, the la the last question uh, with the nested analysis, it showed that small fragments, they do have different species composition compared with large fragment, which means in uh, in, uh, in conservation perspective, is, it's, uh, it means that every, forest, every fragment counts. And it's not good when you're sitting with politicians and forestry department because you, you, you basically are, you are stressing the fact that we need to protect everything and then the, 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 the forestry department wants to know which fragment is more important than others. And, but this is it. And my explanation of these results is because we, have, we are at the edge of the north distribution of many tropical species, and those species which are rare on the north distribution are basically scattered within the landscape. So in some, it depends on the local condition of every single fragment. To summary, in a landscape like this, heavily fragmented, um, every, every fragment counts. They are ex not explained unanimously from the same uh, factors and uh, and the species comp oops the species composition change between uh, a small and large fragments. Fine. Now we move to Borneo. How many of you have been to Borneo? Okay, okay, good. So because I've done this second part of my presentation, yeah, uh, more naturalistic approach. So lots of plants. <laughs> And uh, so um, this is Borneo, which is divided between three countries, Brunei, uh, Sarawak and Sabah, Malaysia, and uh, Kalimantan, Indonesia. And uh, the vegetation in Borneo, it's complex, obviously. Uh, I listed three main categories. Obviously, uh, someone can criticize because they are way more than that. They are all the mountain forests, which is not included here. But generally speaking, we have the mixed dipterocar forest, the heath forest, and the pit from forest. Then we have the mangroves, we have the river forest, we have the, 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 the freshwater uh, uh, forest, and so on and so forth. So there's many more, but just to give you an, a, a, a walk into the, into the uh, forest of, Brune of Borneo. But before that, uh, as, as the beginning, 
let's, if you, if you visit me in Brunei, I definitely will bring you here, which is uh, not far from my house and uh, is a nice tropical shore. And here, somewhere here, you get this little canyon, which looks pretty anonymous, and shrubs, uh, Dicronopteris linearis, a fern, and then you see the, the size of the canyon, have you have rocks, uh, uh, round uh, stones, and then more solid soil, and then again. And um, this is the, the water level, the sea water level of this area uh, over uh, 2 million years. Okay, so uh, there was sea level. When, when, it's expo when you have the bead, basically, when you have uh, rocks, it means that it was uh, exposed. So there was a, a river, the river was bringing rocks. When it's more dense soil, it means basically it was covered by, by, wood, by sea, and then the, the, there's a compact layer of sand. Fine. At the bottom of it, here, you can see this one. This is a trunk, fossil, fossil of trunks. This is my binocular. This is a, a trunk which are exposed, obviously deteriorating, destroying this and themselves. Not many people are studying it, actually. And um, so every, you know, I used to go there just uh, collecting, not collecting fossils because they, you cannot collect very much. They destroy easily. You need to, pro, you need to process in order to, protect, to collect them. But it's very, a very abundant site. And here you can see leaves, 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 leaves all over the place in the specific site. And, uh, and then they found lots of pollen and obviously lots of microfossils showing that the, during the Pliocene, basically the vegetation of that specific site is the same as today. <laughs> nothing, has, nothing, no, nothing much has changed since. Fine. So let's go to the heath forest. Heath forest is not similar, but you can imagine the Caatinga in uh, South America. And uh, the, because if I'm not mistaken, uh, 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 the Caatinga is correct, is uh, a, dry, uh, a dry environment on a, on a, on a, on a, on a good soil if I'm not mistaken. This is a poor soil in a very wet environment. This is not snow, this is a white sand, and the, the, the organic matter is gone, obviously, as soon as you have a, 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 the forest is, 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 is removed. Keranga is an is a idiom of um, Iban language, the local people, which means the, 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 the land where you cannot grow rice. So basically they try to grow rice, it doesn't work anything, doesn't grow anything, so you know, they abandon. And um, the forest is also called the silent forest because there are not many birds. It's very poor in species richness, but it's very high in, in endemic species, obviously, because it's a, it's a very strange environment. So you need to be specialized to survive in that environment. So you have a drosera, you have all the carnivorous plants, and so on and so forth. And more mature forest looks like this, but still very open, very, lots of light reaching ground. And uh, as soon as you have a depression, a small, Depression, you have water, uh, um, and which is already a transition towards the pit swamp forest. So uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very strange forest, basically. Common ferns are Schizea dichotoma, Schizea digitata, which is also occurs in, in not the same species, same genus in South America, and more or less the same, the same um, habitat. Uh, Nephentes ampullaria, a terre not terrestri a, a Nephentes, which has the picture on the ground, usually uh, hanging, and uh, the lip it doesn't cover, it stays outside because they, they, they feed on uh, small insects and falling leaves. And then an important plant is Agatis bornensis, which is an endemic gymnosperm, so this is the bark, easily to, to recognize the cone and uh, the typical gymnosperms leaves in Borneo. We move to the Pitzron Forest, and uh, 
And here in these slides, we can also see why ferns are important, why we need to study ferns. This is a, a site in Brunei which was burned three times and, uh, and still swampy here. You have water up to your knee if you walk here. But here, from here to here, which is basically hectares and hectares of, of uh, abandoned soil, um, it's covered by three species, sedges, uh, Stenoclena palustris and Blacknum indicum, which are covering the entire area, blocking the regeneration of the forest, even though you have hot bills here and, and a good forest, and they are bringing seeds over this area, but there's no way that the can seed can reach the ground, generate, germinate seedlings, saplings, and eventually, and eventually reestablish the forest. This vegetation in Southeast Asia has caused the failure of million million dollars project on forest regeneration because they didn't manage properly the 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 the, 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 the um, this area and they're terrible here they are how they looks like this is a, a student and you can see how tall they can be and um, this is the entrance of a pit swamp forest where uh, I conduct my studies. This is a pipeline which goes bring the water from the from the Pison Forest and brings to the refinery uh, in Kuala Balai to for the oil uh, production. And um, and here we enter. So it's wonderful pandanus, epiphytic ferns, uh, aerial um, roots, and uh, an iconic plants is the. Uh, Ampul Nefentes bicalcarata, which is this two tooth here, very characteristic, huge plants. And um, another one, Mixtipterocar forest. Sometimes you see this beautiful tota and, uh, and the view of the forest uh, of uh, a mixed deep forest. This is a typical view of Borneo. If you, if, you, if, you, if you have to think about forests of Borneo, Borneo forest, this is it. This is from a, a canopy walk in Brunei. And uh, standing there at 6 o'clock in the morning, you have gibbons jumping around, calling. Beautiful place. The research station is down here. Down here, sorry. That's the river. And... Um, as you know, the mixed dipterocarp forest basically is the name start from the dipterocarps, uh, which is highly diverse family in Borneo and uh, Sumatra and Southeast Asia, basically. Again, if you going back to Wallace's line, if you check the number of dipterocarp species in Borneo and in Sulawesi, in Borneo we have hundreds of species, in Sulawesi 14 species. So it does work for some family. Uh, so this is an, a view from inside, and some emerging trees that you can see, the Compalsia excelsa, which is not a, a dipterocarp, but is a legume tree, and with lots of um, uh, beehive of Apis dorsata. And this is a, a, a species which is protected in Malaysia and in Borneo, you cannot lock down. Uh, sometimes you see the palm plantation with this tending Compalsia in the middle of the plantation. And uh, another epiphytic, no, another, uh, and, um, I mean, among the um, emerging trees, we have uh, um, the Apis dorsata and sometimes the Platycerium coronarium. No, sometimes it's quite, it's quite common species actually in Borneo. Uh, massive epiphytic species. On the ground, looking for at ferns, we have Dipteris lobiana and Dipteris conjugata, the two. This is the most common, and this is, you have to go to a specific site to see this beautiful fern. Fine. My project, when I moved to Brunei, I moved to Brunei because I did want to be in a humid habitat and to see how the forest looks like. I was in Shishambana, it was fine, I had a fantastic project. There was the opportunity to move to Borneo, and I want to go to Borneo, and I want to be in the forest often to see and to learn more about the forest. 
And so I moved to Brunei. This is the capital. And so I'm, I started to do the basic project, you know, checklist of the species, uh, a, a community composition of ferns in the tropical forest of, Bo of, of Brunei. And, uh, and then I moved on on more physiologic, physiological aspects that we are showing in, in one slide today. Um, so the checklist, so far we have 383 species. Um, this is the poor collection that we have in Brunei. Lots of empty spaces here, but here is very difficult to go. Here is virtually impossible. This is the highest point of Brunei, 2,000 meters. You need to go with a helicopter, and it takes, it takes uh, uh, quite some time to organize it. The, the, the administration in Brunei is sometimes is a bit baroque, I would say. So, but if we take a larger perspective, if we download all the GBIF data, here we are. This is what we know, OK? And most of these data are from Malaysia and from Indonesia. So uh, 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 Bogor in Indonesia or Leiden uh, in the Netherlands. And so assuming that this is what we have, well, obviously the number of species is higher. Not, it's not a surprise. But what we can see that Malaysia did a good job. Saba, Sarawak and Saba are well, connected, uh, well collected. Brunei, OK. And, and Kalimantan is still a, whole, a, a very, very, really <coughs> a black hole somehow. If we, if we process this data, we see in a more organized view, again, we can see that the species richness uh, 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 from species to family. Here is basically Skinabalu, 4,000 meters, so all the alpine uh, uh, vegetation um, um, species. And uh, here is not Brunei, even though cover part of Brunei, but basically is Mulu the National Park of Mulu, which is a limestone substrate. So you have all the uh, lowland species, uh, mixed diptocarp uh, species, plus the species on limestone, uh, limestone substrate. So it's uh, obviously it's more diverse flora. Again, if we see at the diversity level, beside the red dots and, and the yellow, what we can see here is that you know, we virtually know nothing on this area. And this is the here next to uh, Pontianak, and here is the area with the highest uh, dense population density of orangutans. Okay, and this is our knowledge of ferns. Perhaps trees we have a better knowledge, but in terms of terrestrial herbs, is very little. Fine. Uh, so, after the checklist, I, 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 I started to do the, the, the plots all over Brunei, and then I figured out this is an incredible valley, a V-shaped valley, and uh, this is a typical cradle and museum hypothesis, and so on and so forth, you know what I'm talking about, and, uh, and here I have seen something which is really unbelievable. It's one of the most diverse and astonishing places I've seen in all the tropics so far. And it, sorry, it's a, it's a V valley. This is the entrance, which is, doesn't look very V, very a V shaped valley. But uh, it's getting darker and darker. All the, all the pictures are terrible. It's very difficult to, to get a very nice picture. And, uh, but the first fern that you can encounter is this beautiful Chistodium sorbifolium. It's distributed in two sites in Sumatra and in few sites in Borneo. And uh, has been discovered in uh, amber fossil in Myanmar. So during the Cretaceous, this species was in Myanmar and now is shrinked into Borneo in small places, pockets of vegetation here and there in lowland forests of Borneo and Sumatra. Borneo, I would say Sarawak, uh, Sarawak, yes. Kalimantan is drier, so it's, not, it's never been recorded in Kalimantan. First astonish, I mean, it's an endemic family, eh? endemic to Borneo and Sumatra. The second one is Macroglossum smithi, Maratiesi, uh, uh, an archaic family of, uh, of uh, ferns. And uh, this is a stream. 
is an incredible place. In this area, there are no, for the first 20 meters, 50 meters from the river, there are no angiosperms. There are only ferns. It's incredible to work in a place without flowering plants. It's a landscape that not, we cannot even think about because we are surrounded by flowers or flowering plants. And here is just Macrogossum smithi or Maratiesi or uh, Maratia smithi sometime. And um, beautiful, amazing ferns. And you can walk for 50 meters in this sort of landscape. So second archaic ferns. Third one is, uh, used to be a Tectaria grandidentata. Uh, uh, Dr. Bing has uh, changed the, 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 the genus to a different genus from Tectaria to, to Melephilix. And it does make sense because most of the Tectaria are terrestrial, uh, terrestrial, sorry, are, yes, terrestrial. And this one, instead, it grows on rocks and only in this very, very peculiar habitat, high, highly humid and, and dark in, 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 in light availability. And this is when you can spot the best ferns. I, I love this fern, which is Christensenia ice scutifolia, again, a Maratiesi. And this is how it looks like, palmate leaves, very succulent leaves. And here you can see the the abaxial side with two, forget about the stomata, the, the cell guard. These are the stomata. One and two. There are two, three stomata per square millimeter. Think about the, on average ferns, they are 50, 60, 70, 90. And these are two, which means has to live in a very, very humid environment. As soon as the humidity drops, this species is gone. We do have this species at the Botanic Garden. We, are, we have done so much work to keep it alive and forget to see the, spore, the, 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 the plants reproducing. It's just to keep alive. Is, is, it's a, we win the battle. It's beautiful. It's, sorry, it's 20, 30 centimeter tall. Okay? There are sites not far from here where there are a meter, meter and 10 centimeter tall fern. Okay, I don't know what is the next slide, so I'm not. Um, oh, yes, exactly. Oh, perfect. Um, okay, so now a few slides about my plots on the, um, I have done over 200 plots throughout Brunei, uh, 20 by 20, and uh, including soil. What, what we discover, I mean, what discover, we didn't discover, we, we confirmed the importance of soil in plant distribution. Okay, for ferns and particular large scale, there was always temperature and cli climate, which was the main driver, which is true, I'm not, I'm, I'm not criticizing it, and, uh, but soil is important. And it is even more important today when we have the United Nations, the FAO, they're always stressing the point obviously, and we, 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 we reason to reduce the soil erosion and, uh, and to keep the soil in, for example, in Singapore, there is a secondary forest of abandoned rubber plantation, where now is a secondary forest. If you go there, it looks good, but you don't have the herbaceous composition. The herbaceous composition is still not there after 50 years. And the reason is that the soil has no didn't have the time to, to evolve to a proper soil suitable for the terrestrial herbs. And here, just simple, a subset of, uh, of, my, of, of my plots, and it's not yet published. And uh, so, as you can see, that obviously the MDF forest have uh, a different species composition and mainly driven by uh, clay and uh, pH and, and uh, silt, whereas peat swamp forests are obviously driven by sand. Uh, the peat swamp forests are seated on, on sand. I mean, you have a, a thick layer of, of, of um, peat, obviously, but, um, but uh, the first layer is sand. So the, the root system of, 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 uh, of ferns, they are anchored 
on, on, the, on this tiny layer of sand. Heat forest is a bit of mix, and it's also because obviously with the disturbance of the environment, you have always this type of forest, which we call heat forest, but it's not necessarily always a, a correct um, category. Fine. Then I say, okay, what can we can we have a, a potential list of species beside a checklist that are more sensitive to climate change compared with uh, more sensitive versus the species that are, you know, that they will survive happily with the change with the with the change of the scenario. So what's the difference between terrestrial and epiphytic? Can we observe some difference in terms of uh, physiology, in terms of uh, uh, morphological traits and so on. And then I started to measure the uh, um, elements inside the leaves. And uh, here we can see the uh, epiphytic species on your left. Uh, they are always higher in terms of uh, phosph phosphorus, uh, potassium, calcium, compared with terrestrial species, whereas uh, uh, whereas uh, nitrogen, the, 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 um, the epiphytic species have a lower concentration of nitrogen. What does it mean? It means that this has been explained with the hypothesis of the so-called lux luxury consumption. Basically, species that are uh, uh, in, in difficult environment, like epiphytic species, no soil, lots of radiation, and so on, they invest a lot of energy into the leaves, and so they, they use the you know, they change the parenchyma into more succulent structure, and so they accumulate elements inside the leaves for uh, worse conditions, worse uh, climatic conditions. And uh, whereas terrestrial, because they can continuously uptake nutrients from the ground, they, they, are, they invest less, basically, in the, in the, in the, in the development of, uh, of, uh, of leaves. This is a more complicated graph, but basically shows the same. The phosphorus is an important factor for epiphytic species, whereas it's not significant for, for terrestrial species. Fine. The good point to be in Brunei is just you, you can do these things easily. You can go in the forest, you collect the plants, you collect your, your leaves, and you do the analysis, and you, know, you get results, which, is, uh, which is, uh, uh, has never been done, basically particularly for Southeast Asia. And uh, fortunately, I am the curator slash director slash gardener slash everything of the UBD Botanic Garden. This is our team, uh, Dr. Yati. She's the director of Iber, Aslina, Abun, and Amir. This is the core of the people who are working at the UBD Botanic Garden. And uh, is the youngest in Southeast Asia. Probably uh, we are here in the oldest botanic garden of US. This is the youngest, only five years old. And we are reaching the six on February 2023. It was inaugurated by the Sultan. I hope it's not coming back on, uh, oops, it's not coming back on February because it's a head of state visit and is, the protocol is terrible. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, this is the rumor probably he want to visit again and see the progress uh, in, in six years with COVID, you know, <laughs> with the problem of COVID. <laughs> anyway, uh, inside the garden, we have greenhouse here. We have uh, over 300 herb species inside the greenhouse. And we have run a very nice project uh, started from the second year of the Botanic Garden, securing the, fut the future of threatened trees giant in Borneo. Borneo has several endemic dipter carp species, seven, of, uh, yeah, seven in, in, in Brunei. So uh, in collaboration with a consortium of botanic garden within Borneo, we basically identified those who are present in, Bor in Brunei. So we went out into the forest, we identified the species, we collect the seedlings and seeds, we brought back the seeds into the botanic garden and uh, eventually we secure them um, in, in the botanic garden. Many of them died, and uh, as usual, there's always a problem. We, we had so many problems uh, from the starting, you know, fungi contamination of, uh, of flower bed, and all the plants died. You need to start again. 
and so on and so forth. You know, the richness in biodiversity also means the richness in uh, diseases for plants. And, you know, and um, so anyway, uh, this is the leftover basically. Not many, but at least we have something to demonstrate to, to schools and to politicians, stakeholders. And we also organized conference. The, the most important indeed is the Flora Malesiana conference with 300 plus uh, participants and visit of international authorities. I don't know if you recognize her. She is the queen of, uh, princess, sorry, princess of Thailand, one of the most down to earth royalties I have ever met. And uh, she's an amazing woman. She's in love with orchids. Obviously she's Thai and you know, as a national flower and uh, but she told me, oh, yes, if you collect orchids, it's very difficult with all this IUCN application. You are telling me. I mean, you are the, the, the princess. I have to go through all this paperwork to export all the material. Anyway, we do education with kids, secondary schools, university students, uh, and uh, to have hands on, basically, on, uh, on sharing to young people living in Borneo, what does it mean to be there? What does it mean to go into the forest, a normal park, and have nephentes as a weed? Okay, a pitcher plant as a weed. For us, when the first time I saw a pitcher plant, wow! And for them it's okay, yes. You know, yet another species of pitcher plants. And um, that's it. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>